Well, I'm on the second journey, second leg of my trip. Still waiting on a train. I'm hidden good back here. I got a really good way back. I got some broken branches that I step over and then turn around and these are loose ones I tore off then I can stand them back up now it looks like there's no trail back here especially from way out there but it's a nice little cubby hole back here uh, could lay down right there or whatever kind of downhill that way uh, but yeah I also want to thank a fan and friend for sending me a it's a handheld lightning de detector it detects lightning within like 10 or 15 miles or 30 miles you can set it to different miles and he sent me a stun gun to protect myself you can plug it into the wall or add a battery in case I'm in a bad area or need to defend myself I can deliver 50,000 votes and make somebody think twice about trying to steal my stuff but I have it all wrapped up in a shirt in plastic bags deep down in my backpack right now both of them the weather is supposed to be good for five days so i have them both down in there and there's also a weather handheld weather uh device that tells your barometric pressure your temperature your elevation and all that and you can set it to metric like to celsius or fahrenheit pretty neat little gadget if I get it out, I'll have to demonstrate them to you. But anyway, uh, it's just about 10 minutes after 7 a.m. I got this phone video setting where it's a lot more clear. I couldn't find 4K for some reason, so the guy set it to 8K. It's just going to take forever to upload it, and it's going to take up a lot of room, but I got a pretty big SD card, so, and I'll make the videos a little shorter and see how that does at first. But anyway, for now, uh, the second leg, I made about 200 miles. Uh, it's now morning. The mosquitoes didn't eat me up too bad, but I got that cold and, uh, it's like 70% deep. I tried the 70% instead of the 100%. Every time I sprayed that 100% on, it felt like I had sunburn. It, it was that strong. But this other stuff, you just spray on your clothes, not your skin. And it's enough to ward off. And I spray it on my pack. Keep ticks and stuff off my pack, too, and my bucket. But anyway, just thought I'd say good morning and then update everybody. Waiting on my train right now. Alright, this very well may be my train finally coming in. It was due in about 2 a.m. But he's got to drop 65 cars and pick up 45. Yep, that's him. Since I'm on 8K, I'm not going to let it run too long until I get used to how much it's going to fill up my SD card. Alright, we're going to be looking at my new mat I got. You know what, I've tried all them air mattresses. I've tried, uh... Those bubble ones. I've tried the ones that fold up into a rectangle and 
Now those look ridiculous on the back of your pack. Look like you're part robocop, part hobo flop. So you go into any army surplus store and you can get these between 10 and 15 bucks. Sometimes you can talk them down to five dollars if they're kind of ripped a little. But all they are is <coughs> military green foam. Now, if you get two of them, of course, you got to double that size. And then I wrap, always wrap my tarp up on the outside of it. I lay my tarp down first and then my mat, and then I roll it up. That way at night when I roll out, my mat, my tarp's already first. There goes uh, southbound right there. And I'm just carrying this summer pack. I don't think the thing costs more than 40 bucks. I'll show you some other things that are starting to come out. Yeah, I went by Academy. And these are only $9.99. They're long sleeve shirts. If it's not cold enough, to wear a coat, you just throw on a long sleeve camo shirt. And here's that Gatorite I was telling you about. You know, I've heard several people mention this stuff called Liquid IV. And I'm gonna look for that. They say it's a powder you mix with water. So I'm definitely gonna try that. Now this stuff here is like $9 a can. It's 100% deep. But you can't get it on your skin. You got to spray it on your clothes and your pack only. Only on your gear. It feels like you got constant sunburn. But it runs out really quick. You only get to use it twice. So what I opt for is the 40% deep. It's not harsh enough. It's not too bad on the environment but we're not talking about the environment here we're just talking about survival and these these cost a little extra but I got a I got a Sam's card so you can get them for like 90 cents a piece instead of three dollars like at the store so it, it pays off to get a Sam's card if you go into a town and you know somebody you can leave your groceries with. But yeah, always make sure you get a, get them room temperature. Anything, any kind of drink or anything. That way it doesn't sweat and get everything you got wet. Now here's another thing. It's pretty new. Not the pure leaf, but the... Subtle sweet. You can oh I didn't realize it was peach until I looked through the camera lens. Uh never tried that one. But the subtle it's barely hint of sugar. It's just enough to satisfy you. And I got these on that Sam's card. And these are about a dollar ten a piece. Uh average out to be. And in my double tape bottom water bottle and single taped up top. You know, the, you go to Walgreens. Walgreens has the best water bottles for train hopping. They got the good handles on them. But lately, they've been getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. It's getting to where it's almost ridiculous. If they get any shorter, I'm going to have to go to one of those ones you just hold like this. It's got a tab, you can hold it. Those are about the only two water bottles for train riding. Because you're not going to sit there and hold a 99 cent bottle by, like a milk jug. It just bends and breaks and stuff after a while. But anyway, that's as far as the new stuff. And I put all my battery banks inside here. I had a good fan friend send me these little army pouches. And I put my wires and my electrical uh, boxes in here. 
uh, blocks, I mean, the blocks and the wires in there and the power banks in there. And I got two of them, so I got four battery banks and some baby wipes. Make sure you always carry baby wipes. And as far as gloves, I swear this is no joke. The best pair of gloves I ever found were these cheap $2 garden cotton gloves. Now, if it gets below 20 degrees, of course, they're, they're not going to work. But if it's like 30 degrees, get you a pair of $2 cotton gloves. You'll be happy. Because the, the tighter your fingers are, the less blood circulation there's going to be. So actually, some tighter, expensive gloves actually end up making your fingers colder. So make sure when you try on a new pair of gloves to buy that the fingers aren't tight or the wrist ain't tight or you're going to end up with colder hands than warmer hands all right i hope them tips help a little i'm gonna wait around the train i'm getting going northbound so i gotta sit around and wait on a jump when i was rolled out last night i seen a perfect perfect cadillac turned the right way and everything but I was rolled out by the time I had would have gotten rolled up it would have been on the move that's what I mean by always make sure you're ready don't get rolled out too much unless you're ready to go to bed once I roll out that's it I'm gonna sleep for three or four hours and then continue my day but anyway that's it for that little piece Let's get to riding. Alright. Those first two scenes of this video were in 8K. I got it set back to 9... 16th... Uh... H... Or UHD 9 16th uh, ratio. But... Anyway, kind of show you where I'm back. Yeah... Here's what I do. Once I make a path back somewhere, I take a really broad leaf uh, tree and just break it off and stick in the ground, kind of like so. And you wouldn't believe it. That don't seem like much, but it. the eye is funny, the human eye. When you're out there walking on the tracks, all this other stuff behind these limbs blends in with that so that hides my path back here and I, anytime you get ticks and sugars and stuff make sure you spray from about thigh down spray your boots all the way around to pull your pant leg up and spray your boots Make, make sure you try to keep it off your skin and then find you a tree I broke a limb off here to hang your pack up that way you ain't got no uh, jigglies and ticks and chiggers growing up yeah there's my crummy keys I had a nice fella send me and again uh, I brought my lightning detector I had a good friend uh, fan send me. Uh, I got my 50,000 volt zapper pack down in here that he also sent. I'm not sure if he wants me to mention his name, uh, but when you see this comment, leave me a comment if it's okay for me in the future to mention your name. And my friend Gib Campbell traded me. I had some old brown tape for some camo uh, but anyway I was also going to give a shout out to Lawrence and Larry and uh, everybody out there pray for Betsy that's Larry's wife she's undergoing some uh, health problems uh, if you'll keep her on uh, your prayer list that she makes a full recovery I know she'd sure appreciate it. So would Larry and me. And it don't matter about the bucket. Ticks really can't climb stuff like this. But, I mean, what are they going to do anyway? 
Now I got three layers of protection. I got from about four inches down, I got four layers of duct tape. And then two layers on up and then one layer of regular brown tape that keeps water holes from springing and leaking your bottle all right sitting here waiting on my train yeah uh, let me give you a little uh tour of what happened yesterday let me get my tripod set up all right so yesterday uh, I went to Bristol to catch out and so uh, I went to the Dollar General store there by Anderson. Anderson's an overpass that goes across the main line and I got a couple of coffees and another gallon of fresh water and it started raining so I've kind of sat under the eave of the bridge, the overpass stay dry and a, a rookie cop about 22 21 years old pulls up and he goes we can't have you sitting under the bridge you'll go to jail for six months plus a uh, $25,000 fine I'm thinking I didn't say a word but I'm thinking yeah right you're just trying to get rid of me because I they don't want no more they think I'm a local homeless person moving in but just about then uh, a, a sergeant a big black guy came in I mean his arms he looked like Michael Clark Duncan bald head he gets out of his car and as soon as he did he's like homo shoestring what's up brother how you been feeling and that little skinny 90 pound white cop looks at it, me and him like how do we know each other and uh, he goes, yeah, we got some reports, you know, uh, people under the bridge. Uh, so I walked down to Ash Street, about a half mile down, and same thing. It was a third cop told me, you can't be under the bridge. And I'm thinking, you know what? I bet you the railroad got together with the police department and trying to get me run out of town. So that's all right. I come way, way, way down near Greenville, south of Greenville, near Ted, Tedford, Tennessee, to catch out. It's below Bulls Gap where I'm at now. So, I think I hear a train. I talked to Railroad uh, Billy with uh, East Tennessee Rail Ray, uh, my, my buddy. And he said they got one lined up to come in the Tedford siding, so that's what I believe I'm hearing right now. You hear that low rumble? Well, whatever it is, sounds like a different horn, like it might be, I don't know, it might be a maintenance away uh, the local Stop. I think he is going to stop. Boy, I hope there's an open box car.
Now the siding's over on the other side, but a lot of times a train that gets here first won't take the siding. He'll let the other train take the siding. Because sometimes some trains are too long to fit in the siding. So they'll just leave them, leave them on the main. That way when the shorter train opposing direction gets here, he'll, uh, he'll have space in that siding to get around. These are all, all empty. Maybe we'll get an old rusty banged up open one. I still say it's a Knoxville train. Unless he's got a DPU. That back engine was one of them uh, uh, engines you lease. A box car. Now, if he's too short and passes up that road crossing down there, I'm not sure the name of it. I don't want to walk past it with a backpack or they'll know what's up. After what happened yesterday, I sure don't need any any more heat. Yeah, these are all empty too. Maybe they'll have a Cadillac grainer coming up. There's one of them weird gooseneck ones. Like in Hagerstown. Nope, no uh, Cadillac. Yeah, there is, right there. No, that's a half Cadillac. You can see through the side, but you can hide down under the roof. Boy, I hate those little stickers that especially when they turn brown. God, you got to never get them off. Oh, I don't stop here with all this junk crap crud. My eyesight, I can see down about five cars or four and tell what they are. Yeah, that's he's loaded with trash or scrap. That could be a Birmingham train. Uh, with all that scrap going to the automotive industry to be melted down and made into vehicles. Well, he's a long in any way. Uh, these look empty too. Oh my God, an open one right there. Oh, 
か。Oh, he's got cardboard in it too. Gosh, dog it. That's gonna sit right at the road crossing. Jeez. Oh, these are them filthy cars. Concrete soda ash. There's the DPU on the end, I think. That's it. Don't go chasing waterfall. I mean, box cars. Because it looks like it's gonna. That box car is gonna be right up there. At that road crossing, and I'll get seen getting on. Yeah, why couldn't it bend down a hundred yards? Well, shit, I told you. Right there at the road crossing would be that open box car. We got like a whole line of cars right behind me that would see me. God darn it, I wish it was nighttime. Crap. Yeah, too many cars in the way. Maybe the one in the opposing lane will stop. He still got the red light on the other end. The NF-127 Yeah, there, that zinc there Z-I-N-C Zinc what that stuff was rolling around on that last video of mine. Like a zinc oxide. Glad the wind's blowing that way. Doesn't look like he's gonna stop. About a good ride. Half a Cadillac, a whole Cadillac. Yeah, he ain't stopping. Then the auto rack. Half the cat rack. The NS-127. Jeez. 
you later. Well, I just got word the 14Z has just derailed 14 miles south of here. That's the train I was waiting on. The lead engine and some cars run off the track, so it's going to take them a while to uh, clean that up. Depends on how bad it damages the track, too. So, yeah, and I'm waiting in the siding right there. So there's not going to be any traffic for at least six or eight hours. So I went ahead and rolled out. Got my new mat rolled out. My tarp's underneath that. You just can't see it. I pulled all the roots up, make it flat and everything. It's still kind of leaning, but I don't plan on getting a good a whole night's sleep just till they get that derail cleaned up. And that's the train I was supposed to get on. So they'll start stacking in some southbound stuff. Uh, this is the first siding to the derail and they'll put the first southbound in the siding here and then the second one they'll do in Bristol Yard and then Abingdon and on up till they get that derail cleaned up. I wish I could walk that far down but then they'd have it cleaned up. That way I could go ahead and get on one of the cars that didn't derail and then just go on when they get going. But yeah, the 14Z mixed freight manifest derailed near Telford, between Telford and Jonesboro. Uh, so anyway, there's not going to be any traffic because they're that's blocking the right of way, all that debris and bent track there's some critters already running around on them but i don't mind as long oh it's just an ant anyway at least i can get a nap till they get things going again anyway that's how it is my luck Alrighty, i'm gonna get a cat nap or a dog nap or a llama nap well, good morning. Well, sorry for no riding in this video. It just turns out that way sometimes where you just don't get a chance or it's pitch black and there ain't no house lights or any lights going by to give you any kind of detail of movement. But uh, there was a derailment 14 miles south of here last night. So there's been no traffic at all. So I I broke some sumac branches to kind of hide myself back here. There's just way too many mosquitoes, even with repellent way back in there. And I even walked way down there and went in the woods and way up there and went in the woods and the mosquitoes are worse than Alaska so I just put my gear there in the corner and rolled out my mat it wasn't cold enough to use my bedroll I threw some sumac over there where there, no one could see in this way from that road but when you're laying down the, uh, the sumac's higher than you are on both sides so there's no way anybody could see me so I just laid out right there. I just got rolled up, took my daily medications, and I noticed on the maps there is a Waffle House 2.2 miles from here. So I'm going to get hoofing and go have me some coffee. Uh, I, I don't know if I could build a fire. There's so many houses around. It's a lot of wooded area, but there's a lot of uh, country folk out here that don't want smoke, no fire on their property. This ain't, this ain't your typical jungle area where I'm at. 
you know, I could build a little bitty tiny squaw fire there, but, you know, just to heat some water and make coffee, but since I got to go get some supplies, I'm going to walk up towards uh, Waffle House. They got a Kroger up that way anyway, so I need to get some supplies. I don't know how bad that derailment is. I've been looking on Google to try and find out, but uh, the six o'clock news, I, I really can't get it to come in. It's so far out uh, where it's based that the uh, news probably ain't got to them yet or it's on the back page. But uh, yeah, I got a friend that watches Division by division, subdivision by subdivision. That's how I knew about that derail. He said, hey man, they got a derailment. It's at the mile post you're at, it's 14 miles south of you. You ain't gonna see no more traffic for a while. And it was that train, that Z14, that train I was waiting on. So it's kind of good that, uh, I wasn't down there in that area waiting to catch it and caught it and then ended up in that derail. So it'll probably take them all day to clean that derail up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this video up. Let y'all know, uh, you know, a lot of times trips start out slow like this. I don't, with me, it's, when I first started riding, it was all the time until I learned the rails, but now it's just coincidences and a series of unfortunate events that happened that's holding me back, that's not making, not allowing me to get too many miles down. Heck, I should have been in Saudi Arabia by now had things been normal. But uh, I ain't made many miles, but I'll get to Idaho, so don't worry. We got all summer. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. I hope everybody has a good week and a good upcoming weekend. Once I get rolling, though, I'll make it there in four or five days to Sand Point. And it won't be quite as hot either. So uh, I'll make it there in the perfect amount of time. All right. We shall see you guys later.